went on a three-stop tour across the, the snow belt to the U.S. We went to Hurley, Wisconsin, we went to Maine, and we went to Wyoming. What we were looking for was to get some feedback from the customers to really find out what it is that, that fuels their passion for snowmobiling. We decided to invite Mr. Fourstroke himself, Doug Henry, to come out on this trip to meet customers and, and to ride with them. Everybody knows that he's a motorcycle racer, but he's also a snowmobiler. Most people don't remember that, that he actually raced snowcross for us at X Games. It was really fun to take him out and ride, meet people. It was really great for Yamaha to uh, invite me on this tour, to come out and meet some of the customers of the Yamaha four-stroke snowmobiles. That's what we have in common, the Pioneer. That's right. The four-stroke Pioneer. That's right. Uh, I had a great time riding and a uh, good chance for me to try out the new product. It's going to be snowmobiling. doesn't get much better having a weekend with Yamaha and Doug Henry. We met customers. We were riding with them. We wanted to, to go where they go, do what they do, and really to, to get to know why they're so passionate for Yamaha four-strokes. Coming into 2012, Yamaha is celebrating its 10th year of making high-performance four-stroke motors. It all started with the 2003 RX-1. And you still see those original RX-1s riding the trails today. Living a dream, fellas, living a dream. My nickname is Evil Santa. I'm pretty well known in the area. They see the big blue one come flying by and they know it's me. People thought we were crazy. I mean, it seems like it did the same thing in snowmobile. And once the four strokes came out, and it proved took it. over. Yeah, it took over. It sure did. Uh, it's a 2003 RX1. I bought it brand new in the beginning of 04 riding season. I've got 12,000 miles on it. Not a hitch. I mean, it's just been so dependable and durable. And I mean, I ride hard. I ride very hard. Uh, my name is Lyman Chisholm. I ride an RX1 03. Uh, I, was, I rode that for four years. I put 18,000 miles on that sled. No worries. Still turnkey rideable today. I really think that was a game changer for the whole industry. The power of it was unbelievable. It was just such a linear pull. It was almost like you would think of how could they actually put this much power into a snowmobile. When I got a chance to ride the Apex with the power steering, I wasn't sure what to expect. Uh, but after riding it for two days, uh, I was just blown away. And talking to some customers afterwards, I realized that I wasn't the only one. Anytime Yamaha came out with a new, bigger, better model, I would be the first one there. Of course, uh, the Apex and with the power steering. Normally there's a learning curve. This thing didn't take me very long. You feel comfortable. You know, you go into a corner and you, it goes where you steer it. I ride a little harder, uh, and so that's what is important to me. I'm Brian Kelly and I ride a 2009 Yamaha Apex GT. Uh, looking back, uh, we started riding Yamahas in 1999. We're the Kellys! And we ride Yamaha! We met Brian Kelly out in Maine, and he's a guy that takes his whole family out to ride. They put on big miles, uh, 150 miles plus a, a day. Uh, since then, I've owned about 20 Yamahas. For me, it's easy. It's the reliability and the build quality. Uh, he has a new Apex, and he loves the power of that sled. For me personally, I just love the motor in that Apex. Uh, you can go out there and ride it for hundreds of miles. You're very, very comfortable on it. it has great wind protection. I'll upgrade or trade up this year from my 09 Apex to a 2012 with the power steering. I'm here this weekend with my husband, Hal. We're at the Northern Outdoors. My relationship with snowmobiling has been riding for over 25 years. So I met Teresa Landers out in Maine, and she'd never had the chance to ride a Yamaha four-stroke. We have two children, and the kids each now have their own sleds. The whole family rides. She's always had kind of the hand-me-down sled. Um, and I've kept the family sled, the two up, um, throughout. So we gave her the opportunity on this trip to to experience a brand new sled. And uh, we'd be on it today if you would take out this brand new 2011 Apex on our ride this afternoon. Would you? I'd love to. Well, here are the keys for today. Breakdowns aren't fun, especially in the nighttime and things like that when you can't find your way out. So it's time for me to get into something 
reliable. I'm hoping to get into a, a Yamaha. I think I was living in the rustic times <laughs> with my other salad. <laughs> this has brought me back to the 20th century. <laughs> my 2011 Apex um, was just a, a powerhouse when I took it out and rode it, the handling, the ride. Uh, I also met Scott Schultz, who takes his family out. Uh, a little different, his kids are young. Uh, he puts three of them in a snow coach. Well, reliability is, is a big issue for me, and, and especially now when I pull this, this snow coach, when we get out on some of these days when it's down to zero, we're below and we take the girls out and go riding. I rely on that reliability to, uh, to make sure it's gonna get me back to the motel with our girls out there. So, uh, so I have a shoulder that, that gets sore when I ride or work it real hard. Uh, so the power steering fit in really well um, for me. It's just a dream to ride. It, it, it corners so nice and it, it, it rides so smooth over the rough trails. The, um, the reliability, uh, the resale value, fuel economy uh, was just unbelievable. It far past my expectation. So we met a lot of customers who really loved the 2011 Apexes and the media really loved it as well. It won the Sled of the Year Award. We won Best New Technology for the Electric Power Steering System. Uh, and the good news is that the Apex is going to move forward in 2012 uh, with its power steering, with its 163 horsepower engine. It will be available in the SE package with the all-air suspension, the base model, as well as the, the XTX version with the 144-inch rear suspension. It'll come in the 10th anniversary special color and graphics, as well as a beautiful electric blue color and graphic package. We've always thought that the Vector was one of the most versatile, well-rounded trail sleds that we've offered. And I was amazed at how many die-hard Vector owners we found that agree. My name is Gary Landry. I ride a 2010 Yamaha RS Vector. So we met a really loyal Vector owner, Gary Landry, out east. He literally buys a new Vector every year. The Yamaha Vector is, uh, in my opinion, very versatile. It's very affordable. Uh, I get a new one every year, so I don't spend a lot of money on the outright purchase or like when I trade it in, you know, at the end of the winter time. Uh, the motor is very sweet. I mean, it's probably one of the best engines I've ever had in all the years of recreational vehicles. I mean, it's, it's a smaller engine, but it has a tremendous punch. I mean, you can go riding with anybody with any other snowmobile and you're not lacking behind. It's very well versatile. So when you think about an extreme snowmobiler, you don't usually picture a Vector owner. But Nick Keller is an extreme snowmobiler. I live in Richmond, Minnesota. Right now I'm averaging over 300 plus miles a day and I drive a uh, 010 RS Vector GT. After I got into heavy sledding uh, and I like distant driving, so I started getting into the four strokes. When you're putting on uh, 200 plus miles a day, it's a big deal buying gas. So quality of the machine and uh, durability of it. I bought a different brand and it was too heavy. So in 08, I switched to Yamaha and I'm truly in love with it. So when we were up in Maine, we met Megan Kelly and she's been around snowmobiling all her life and she just absolutely loves trail riding on her Vector. I started when I was a little kid, I was probably like two or three. We would get towed behind snowmobiles when we were little in sleds, so we started at a young age, yeah. Um, I ride a Vector, black with chrome windshield, it's really nice. Um, I like the open trails, the ones that you can just go straight, go fast. But it's something when you snowmobile at a young age, you can take it with you. I'll snowmobile when I'm an adult. Yeah, this year they came out with the fuel injected models and it's uh, really been a tremendous engine improvement. I mean, the performance is there, it, it pulls tremendously hard, uh, accelerates coming out of the corners, it just picks up and goes. Um, when you go over the bumps, it's so much nicer than the ones that are closer to the ground. The suspension's so much better. I love it. It really swayed me over on the high mileage, and uh, like I said, it's just a great ride. People ask how I can sit on a machine for that many miles. I said, the sled speaks for itself. So with all those happy Vector owners out there, there's only one question that remains. When does Vector get electric power steering? And I'm happy to say that this is the year.
So for 2012, the Vector and the Vector LTX both get electric power steering. They're gonna get the lightweight handling, the confidence-inspiring cornering, and all the benefits that come with EPS. It's also gonna get the third generation front suspension geometry that the Apex has introduced last year. It has 15 millimeters more trail at the spindle for even better straight line handling. It's gonna significantly reduce hunting and darting on the trail. So what we found is that customers tend to set their monoshock rear suspension and then forget it. So what we've done is we made it simpler, less complex, by putting just a clicker shock on the suspension package. The customer can dial it in, it has the same range of adjustability as the previous setup, but once he sets it, then he can forget it. We got a chance to meet uh, Scott Schultz's wife, Norma, and she loves her 05 Venture, and whenever they go trail riding as a family, she always has her daughter on the back. It was probably fourth grade or fifth grade. I started riding. My dad bought us a uh, snowmobile. There were three of us kids. I'm Norma Schultz, and I ride a 2005 Venture. My husband is Scott Schultz, and we met actually talking about snowmobiling, but he rode Yamaha all his life and I rode his snowmobile and it was so much smoother and so much better ride. So then I got a Yamaha snowmobile. We take a lot of trips together. We have four girls. We can all do it together as a family. We have a snow coach that we pull. My husband pulls behind his snowmobile and three of the girls ride in the snow coach. And Brittany the oldest, which is gonna be 10 now next week, she rides behind me. You're the one that rides on the back, huh? Yeah. You like that? Yeah. I am looking forward to the power steering coming out, hopefully on a venture in the future. My husband has it and I drove it and it is wonderful. I guess we would never change brands. Yamaha has suited us wonderful and we would stick with Yamaha forever. The one thing Norma wished for on her venture was power steering. And this year, Yamaha's gonna make that dream come true. So we're gonna have EPS on the Venture GT this year, plus the same third generation front suspension and ski that we're gonna have on Vector and Apex. In addition to that, we're also moving the handlebar 20 millimeters forward, so there's more space for the driver when there's a passenger on the back. Phaser's our entry-level four-stroke sled. People that buy a Phaser are looking for something that's fun. They want a sled that's reliable, it's easy to operate. They can just go out and ride it. I'm Kaylee Kelly, and I ride a Phaser RTX. So the youngest member of the Kelly family, Kaylee, is an energetic rider, she's aggressive, she was on a Phaser, and she absolutely tears it up. Um, I definitely do like to go fast. It's so much more fun than going slow. Um, I like kind of more the wide open with like twists in it. And I, it's really fun and it just gets everyone out there together. Like our family, we all drive together. It definitely is a really good thing. My name is Cedric Williams. I drive a 2007 Phaser FX. The area I'm located in, it probably, they probably consider it as uh, uh, more of a ditch banging kind of atmosphere where you have tight trails, uh, lots of rough trails. Well, the Phaser is a really good sled for, for these conditions because it's, it's light. It handles well. It's one of the four strokes that you can actually pull up on the front end. It soaks up everything really well. All around, it handles well, and it doesn't beat you up at the end of the day, and that's what really matters. When my dad told me that we were going to be riding with Doug Henry this weekend, it was pretty amazing because he's like my hero. I watch him on TV with the whole X Games thing and all that. Mitchell Sebastian had just an awesome weekend when we got together. It was the first time he'd been able to ride his new four-stroke phaser. He absolutely loved it. He called it the beast. He opened up the trailer and it was right there and I was like in shock because it's like my dream sled. and couldn't be riding it all weekends. He did great. He had Wade in front of him and me behind him pushing. And, uh, and Wade commented several times. He says, you know, Mitchell's doing really well. He's a great rider. Today we got into some rough trails and with the phaser, it, the bumps are like nothing. That suspension is really nice. It soaked them up. You come up to a corner and turned on a dime. Overall, it's just a great sled. 
My family chose Yamaha because it's more dependable than any other brand we've ever seen. The snowmobiles are more unique than the other ones. They have a more comfortable feel for us, so they just fit better with our family. So the Phaser is such a fun sled to ride that we really didn't have to do much to bring it into 2012. So we're bringing it back in a rough trail package with Fox float shocks in the front and a clicker in the rear. We've got the GT, the comfort package, with GYTR dual clicker shocks in front. And we also have the MTX package for the mountain guy with the 144 inch track. The Nitro RTX is one of my personal favorites. It's the one I have at home. And uh, this weekend I got a chance to ride with John Tomlin, a young rider who also had a Nitro. And he and I were riding through the big bumps just having a blast. It was really tough for me just to stay with him. Uh, snowmobiling's been a part of my life 110%. Uh, it's the thing I love to do. Now I'm on a Nitro RTX. I've always been a Yamaha fan. Uh, I raced snowcross for a while and go trail riding, ditch banging, and ride the bumps, the power band of the four stroke is completely unbelievable. Uh, the suspension, it's a big bump chassis. Here Scott Borski and this is my son Nick and we're from Rhinelander, Wisconsin. You know, the Nitro has that, that excitement and, and just uh, on impulse, you can pull the skis off the ground and just go. Uh, it dances across the snow. I have had the most fun with the Nitro. That's. Out of all the snowmobiles we've had, that's the funnest snowmobile that we've had. It lets us get further back in the woods. It lets us get further into those fun places to go and play. The biggest thing about Yamaha is the reliability. The last four years uh, on non-Yamaha brands, I've blown seven engines and four clutches and un untold other issues with snowmobiles. And so last year I got to the breaking point and I said, I don't want any more reliability issues. I drive a lot of miles on snowmobiles and I want a uh, a sled that I can ride and depend on and, and go out and come back every day and not have to worry about it. Oh, the big thing is on my nitro, the power and the torque, when we get into the deep snow and start climbing the mountains and start climbing the hills, you know, I've got that instant, instant throttle response where I can take off from a standing start in deep snow and that torque will just carry me right up on top of the snow and get me going. We're out here doing snow cross down, down in the back of the woods here. So it's, it's not a friendly terrain that we ride. I, I feel, I truly feel that I could probably drop that motor after I put another 10,000 on. I'm probably gonna need another chassis, not another motor. Being young like me, the Nitro RTX is the only sled to have. So in 2012, we, we've updated all three of the Nitro trail models that we have, the, the base model, the Nitro RTX, and the Nitro XTX. RTX is going to get a new track, the Ripsaw 2. When we first introduced the Ripsaw track, it revolutionized the industry. It was such a great track and so well received that our competition even picked it up and put it on their trail sleds. So what we've done with the Ripsaw 2 track is we've gone to a single ply construction and we've redesigned the lug pattern. So what a customer is going to find is he's going to be able to get in and out of the corners flat and fast. Now what Doug didn't know is that when we were in Hurley, he was actually on a 2012 spec sled with the new track and with the new ski. I knew there was something different about that thing. The thing handled so good. People are really going to love this thing. So the third leg of our tour was out in Alpine, Wyoming, and we linked up with some just die-hard crazy mountain riders out there. We're probably one of the only groups on the mountain that you see are 100% all Yamaha sleds, but on the other hand, you don't ever see us pulling each other out, so it makes it nice at the end of the day. With the Yamaha, you can go out farther, 30 miles, and we get the fresh powder. We um, get to the open bowls, and we're always, we're always shredding the fresh stuff. I just feel so much more comfortable in that kind of backcountry on a four-stroke. I'm Sue Han, and I ride a Nitro. Sue Han took her husband's Nitro MTX out for a ride and never gave it back. Well, we've always ridden Yamaha, and we've had it in our budget to get a new sled this year, so Mike had the older sled, so he decided to get the Nitro. I had a day where uh, he was going to let me ride it, so um, it was just so much fun that it's, it's hard to go back. I don't like crowds and I don't like tracks. That's just pretty much straight up. Steve Desenzo is a high mileage, backcountry, mountain exploring kind of guy. He gets about 5,000 miles on his Nitro MTX every year. No matter how far we have to go back, our style is get back there. 30 miles into the backcountry, 
then we're hammering. When all my friends with the two strokes are constantly worried and carrying toe straps, and twice last year, two strokes blew up on me, and we rode out double on my sled. It's that reliability that brings me to Yamaha every time. We gave an opportunity to test ride one of our boosted sleds. Yes, I've ridden the turbo and the supercharger kit. In fact, just yesterday, we did a side-by-side -side comparison. You know, the turbo is gonna give you that, that high-end uh, power wheeling out of stuff, hill climbing or maybe extreme deep snow. The supercharger is phenomenal for boondocking. The second you hit that throttle, that track is going. There, there's no hesitation, there's nothing. It's hard to really say one's better than the other. They're both phenomenal setups. Watching Randy Bolds ride a Nitro Mountain is amazing. He can make the sled do what he wants to do. It, it's just, it's a thing of beauty. And when we put him on a boosted sled, it was even better. I'm Randy Bolds, and I ride an 08 Yamaha Nitro. Uh, it gives me the capabilities to be able to uh, play through the trees, uh, make tight turns. It's got the Maverick track on it. It seems to do really well in uh, deep snow conditions, uh, specifically the push turbo. Um, it seems to perform very well on the mountain. I like the power. I've been saying since the beginning when the Nitro came out that it needed to have that 40 to 60 horsepower more that is available through the push turbo. So I'm very happy with the kit and the way it's turned out. I can't wait to put one on my sled and I can't figure out whether I want the turbo or the supercharger, but it's gonna be one of them. In 2012, we're updating the Nitro Mountain segment. We're gonna have the new MT9 ski to 1.8 pounds lighter each than the previous ski. And on the 162 version, we're gonna have a new ascent track. The new ascent track had three primary targets when we were in development. First, it had to have great lift in the fresh powder. Second, we wanted to have excellent floor acceleration and deceleration. And third, we needed to make a track that would hold up to the extra horsepower of boost product. I really enjoyed this experience. Uh, going out riding on the trails, seeing other uh, Yamaha four-stroke enthusiasts, seeing where Yamaha has started with the RX-1 and where they are today. So one of the great things about, about the tour is that we, we met a lot of customers. So what we've learned is that there's a Yamaha four-stroke snowmobile for everybody, from the sport phaser to the high mileage vector and adventure to the aggressive nitro, all the way up to the high horsepower Apex Rider. The good news is all those products are still available in 2012 at the dealership with some updates. For instance, we've doubled the number of sleds with EPS. We've got two great new tracks and a new trail ski. You can get all the information about the full 2012 lineup at yamahasnowmobiles.com. With what Yamaha has done in the last 10 years with snowmobiling, I could only imagine where they're going next.